Hello and welcome to the Business Day Special. My name is Elizabeth Musa. Today I'm seated with a woman who is doing something very phenomenal. She's attempting to break the world record for the world's longest interview. Her name is Simply Toyin and she's doing something that, like I said, no one has ever thought of. She's a TV host, she's an on-air personality, and today she'll be speaking to us all about this feat she's about to break. Welcome to the show, Toyin. Thank you so much for having me. Awesome. You look awesome. Thank I mean, you. look oh, at I you. Mean, look at you. Made in Nigeria. <laughs> <laughs> it's radiating. Awesome. So let's talk about this record you're trying to break right now. What inspired you to attempt to break the Guinness World Record for the longest interview? It's a combination of things, actually. Um, yes, I'm a journalist, live broadcast um, specifically. I'm OAP, and I found that in the years that I've been active in my profession, one of the recurrent things I've seen is that there are people that have stories. Mm -hmm. Like Nigeria is such a vibrant and diverse nation, and mm -hmm. there are just so many um, untold stories. That was one component of it. And the other part was that growing up as a child, I'd watch this show. It was a 30 minute show after school, Guinness World Record Show. And I think I'm someone that's always been engaged and fascinated by trivia and just information, especially infotainment. So it was something that from an early age, I'd always wondered what could I possibly do that would be something unique to me it wouldn't be something, it'd be something that comes naturally and I wouldn't stress for, but that I could do it in a way that I'd also be in that fantastic book. Because not only was it a show, it's something that we had in our classroom. And I just, you know, it's so interesting to sort of just read through all these like different facts and trivia. Um, I actually put my application in for this, I think 20, around 2018. I'd started thinking about it from 2016. Wow, that's a long time. It is a long time. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, this is the thing. Ideas are good in the brain, but to actually execute it, it goes through a completely different process. Um, completely different process. I actually had the official confirmation for it the beginning of 2020. But because of the nature of the record, mm -hmm. I had this sort of big, grandiose idea of how it would be executed. And in the end, it just it was it just hit me that look, we're in a digital age right now. People are on their smartphones constantly. It's something that as long as people can pick up their phone and, and see it, it's fine. So I um, literally went ahead with the idea. Now on the stories front, I've met so many interesting people and there are so many interesting people that I'll be interviewing for this mm -hmm. uh, project, Nigeria Amplified with Toyin. So you have people that have achieved success in different industries and sectors. And when, if you talk about Nigeria, if we're being sincere rather, you have to pass through a process to achieve your success, however that looks like. And I feel that there are so many people that need to hear stories of what people that they look up to, people that they celebrate have gone through before they, you know, reach the celebrity status or the success. You know, what is it that they've been through? What is it that they had to go through before they got there? Because I think most people are at that point. If you, if you um, put it on a scale of averages, mm -hmm. most people are not, where they want to be, but aspire to be there. And I thought, why not put something together that has value to it? Now, often, you know, people will say, ah, this Guinness World Record, you want to tear the book. And I'm like, look, if it's something that will have a positive impact on not just um, people's mindsets and understanding of people that they celebrate, if it's something that would help um, re-image the way Nigerians are seen in the international community, why not do it? So that's literally, you know, these are the core underlying elements that fueled and energized me actually going for this record. Mm. And safe to say, this has been four years. You said you got the confirmation yes. in 2020. So this has been four years in the making. Yes. How prepared are you in terms of mentally, mm -hmm. physically? Mm -hmm. Because this is a lot. Most definitely. You're going to be interviewing people. I'm interviewing you now. We're going to be done next 30. Right. And you're going to do this for... How many hours are you looking at? And the current record is 55 hours. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I had actually um, planned to do it last year. Mm -hmm. So at that point, it was 37. So just a few months back, it was the record bar was shifted from 37 to 55. 
I am planning, because it's something Nigeria-centric, 64 is a very significant number to Nigeria in that we have yeah. achieved 64 years of independence, independence from yes. colonial rule. Mm -hmm. So for me, the, the minimum, the lowest of the bar can be or should be would be that 64 hours. Just talking to Nigerians that have achieved brilliant and amazing things in Nigeria and in the world as well, in diaspora. You know, when you look statistically, we make up one in about four to five black people on earth. It's a huge statistic. Nigeria is the most populous nation in Africa that's known and the seventh most populous nation on earth. I want us to show the world through this who we are, the, the diversity, the brilliance, you know, just the resilience. And I think resilience is a key, it's a key concept that you can find in almost every Nigerian mm -hmm. because you have to be resilient to even get through your day. So it's almost an imbibed, it's, a, it's something like a genetic trait in the average Nigerian. Mm -hmm. We're always thinking of, yes, if there's a problem, how can I get around this? And it's, it's just, it's a part of who we are. And for me, being able to share how people navigate their challenges, how they've achieved what they've achieved to inspire others and to let people in the international community know how amazing we are as a people. I'm really, really, really looking forward to be doing this and hearing all of those stories and sharing them with the world. Yeah, and so what are the, some of the preparations you've okay. been on to? And like I said, physically, mentally, what are the things you've been doing? Okay, so when we look at that aspect of it, mentally, for me, there's a connection to what I was doing, what I am mm -hmm. doing. Um, I think that that's important. There has to be that genuine passion and interest because anything you're doing for a sustained period of time um, becomes more than just, you can't just be pedestrian in your approach. Mm -hmm. There has to be a level of interest. There has to be a level of preparation for it. Um, mentally, I would say a lot of meditation because having, a, having clarity of purpose and focus is really, really important to staying uh, you know, focused throughout the attempt. Physically, health is so important. I've been preparing for the last few years. I mean, I, I, everybody in my office knows me for this. I have this extremely, I would say, intense um, approach to keeping fit, which is that I do a minimum of 10 kilometers walking daily. Mm -hmm. And that's just because it's great cardio. And also, actually, while I'm walking, I tend to listen to audio books or sometimes just instrumentals. And it's really just good for, for thinking. It's good for like mental clarity as well for me. You know, just, just that strolling. And of course, the benefit to the health, because when you're attempting something as extreme or something that's an endurance test, your fitness does come into play. And mm -hmm. if you're not in tip top health condition, mm -hmm. um, you'll unravel very, very quickly. Mm -hmm. So diet has also been a very important part as well. Nutrition, I'm keeping up with my supplements, I'm being well hydrated. It's, uh, it's all intertwined in you know achieving this feat. So it's not something that you just wake up and say you want to do. Mm -hmm. Mentally, you have to be there. And then health-wise, you also have to be aligned. Awesome, yeah. absolutely. You have to be fit on all fronts, oh, mentally, definitely. physically. Definitely. So speaking of preparations, who are the people that you will be interviewing? I, I imagine that many people will be very curious to know some of these people you'll be interviewing and your selection process. Yeah. Well, the selection process for me started naturally with people that I'm in touch with. I'm fortunate and blessed to have some amazing friends and people that have done wonderful things in their respective industries and sectors. So for me, it's important to um, talk to people from a widespread whether it's those that are physically challenged, that are still making, you know, amazing strides, or whether it's artists. I mean, we're looking at people like Chidi Kubri, and these are, you know, he's a Nigerian artist, but is well regarded or highly regarded in the art world. Um, we're looking at musicians, for example. I have quite a few. I'm thinking whether I should share it and whet your appetite or make people tune in, but I mean, they range from artists that have been in the game for a very long time, so we're looking at people like you know, your two faces, mm, really so a, the, a bit of the old school. And it's not just musicians, actually. I think that it's important to look at the ecosystem behind the success of the artists that they've enjoyed. So there were a lot of executives, I mean, young people like Sir Banco, um, who's popularly known with the David O clan. Mm. We're looking at David O. We're looking at people who have done well in the fintech finance sector as well, such as the Aboyeji, mm -hmm. popularly known with the Flutterwave and you know, has also 
gone on to do great mm -hmm. things uh, from there. There are just so many. There are so many. We have everyday people. So there's a blind lady, for example, Dr. Bibiana Okoli, who um, managed to achieve a PhD despite the fact that she's visually impaired. And, you know, mm. for me, that's an amazing story. So, mm. it's, yes, it's celebrating people in entertainment, in the creative arts, people who are entrepreneurs, um, people who are culturally significant, people who are Nigerian, essentially. And that's the thing. We It's a tapestry of diverse perspectives mm. and experiences. And I am looking forward to how we beautifully mold that together and show Nigeria and the world how great we are as a people. Beautiful. So this is a very unique record that you're trying to Indeed. break. What do you anticipate will be some of the challenges you'll be facing? I mean, okay. something um, of this magnitude, right. there will be challenges. So how do you intend to also well, navigate? You know, I think challenges present opportunities for solutions mm -hmm. and being well prepared is really, really important. Now, because of the nature of the attempt, logistically, mm -hmm. there's a lot of scheduling and coordinating. So we've got people scheduled, but also having backup and contingency plans because it relies on you know the constant flow of people coming in. Now, it's important to mention that in addition to doing the longest interview in the world, I've put a unique twist or spin to it in that it's actually three record attempts in one sitting. Okay, cool. So yes, there is the longest interview, but mm -hmm. there's also the most um, TV interviews in 24 hours and 12 hours respectively. And I think part of why I wanted to do that is that, you know, we spoke about the mental aspect of this. And for me, having like the 12 hour in there is, you know, it's a, it's a low hanging fruit. And it also gives that motivation to keep going as I'm hitting milestones as we progress um, through the attempt. So for me, yes, people break records, but um, in this one sitting, three records will be broken. So those three records, tell us again. So. Yeah, so the longest interview, mm -hmm. which is the interview marathon, okay. that stands at uh, mm -hmm. 55 hours, and we're looking to do a minimum of 64 hours because 64 is a significant number to Nigeria. We're also looking at the most televised interviews in 12 hours. Okay. and the most televised interviews in 24 hours. Mm, the most televised, oh, yes. interesting. So how do you plan to manage breaks for food, mm -hmm. rest, hydration? Because you'll be talking, you have to drink water, right. you have to rest. What are your plans? The Guinness World Records has its prescription. When they give you approval, you also receive your guidelines okay. um, that you must adhere to in order to meet up with being awarded the record. In terms of breaks, for every hour completed, I'm entitled to five minutes rest, okay. which can be accumulated. So I am looking at doing at least um, six to eight hour stretch before taking a first break mm. if need be. Um, in the rehearsals, I've found that I'm able to sort of sit for that period of time like, pretty much comfortably before needing to, to get up. But obviously being hydrated is really important. Mm -hmm. And obviously in being hydrated, you know, at some point I'd need to use the bathroom. So mm -hmm. it's we're scheduling it in for around the six to eight hour mark. But if I don't feel the need to go, I'll simply just keep going. So how do you plan to engage with your audience? Because I know that at the location, right. you, you want to tell us the location? So the location is the Wings Tower Complex, which is the best office space in Nigeria. Mm, tell us. And it's, um, you know, it's an amazing view of Nigeria, I mean, of Lagos State. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when we talk about Nigeria, most people sort of do focus. It's a huge, beautiful nation, but it's uh, Lagos is really has its own significance uh, to Nigeria historically, culturally, and even in terms of trade and commerce. So yes, the, the Wings Tower is where it will be happening. And I'm really, really delighted about that. I think that it's important as well. People have to be able to access the venue. Mm -hmm. And that's also part of the, the regulation. So people are welcome to come and have a look and see that and verify that it's actually happening in real time because that's also important to, of course, absolutely. to the, um, the challenge. Absolutely. And so how will you be engaging with the audience? Because I know you are going to be conducting interviews. Right be carrying out these interviews. I know there are people that will come to yeah. wish you well. Yes, so definitely. how do you be? So the engaging? engagement comes from the fact that it's something, as I said earlier, it's something we're pushing online. So there'll be hashtags. I mean, okay. people will be able to talk online about what the discussion is or who they'd like to see as well. That's something that we're pushing. So people have ideas on who they're interested in seeing interviewed. We're also open to that as well. Um, I mean, on radio, I'm on Lagos Talks and 
on a show called The Dish and the premise of The Dish is that we discuss any and everything and it's a round table. And when I presented this to my listeners, one of the most recurrent people that people want to hear in interviews is actually Wike. Interesting. A very, very interesting. And it's actually a lot of young people who, for whatever reason, they actually want to see an interview with Wike. Thinking about it, I'm actually interested in an interview with Wike. So, you know what? Well, well, let's keep tuned and mm. see what happens. Okay, fingers crossed. You never know who you'll see, but, you know, oh. for 64 hours minimum of interviewing, just expect that there are a plethora of people lined up to interview and, you know, amazing stories, brilliant people, and all Nigerian. And for me, the pride of this project is that it's being done by a Nigerian, with Nigerians, in Nigeria, for Nigerians, and for the world to see how great Nigerians are. Fantastic. What do you envisage will be the impact of this on your life and the life of others? I mean, for me, the greatest um, joy about this is value. It's the, it's the sharing with people what people are doing, because I think that that's something that's also not done enough. And, you know, perhaps it's something that will drive conversations around that, that, you know, it's important to, to look and shine spotlights on people who are doing things. We acknowledge that definitely there's a lot of hardship in the land, but even inside that people are doing amazing things. I mean, I met a young man a week ago who's just 20 years old and he creates drones. And these drones actually water vast fields. And I mean, when we were speaking about um, some of his, his gadgets, he told me that this drone, for example, can water 15 square kilometer radius. Wow. And he's just 20 years old. 20? Just 20. For me, that's the beauty of it. The fact that there's that impact of value that people who, who should be heard and known get to be heard and known. People who we know and celebrate, we get to hear their stories. Mm -hmm. For me, it's a time for people to come together and, you know, through dialogue, there's so much that can be can be achieved. I mean, it builds bridges. Mm -hmm. It also helps in terms of letting us understand ourselves better and also um, reaffirming who we are and sharing that with the world. Mm -hmm. Because there are so many great people that are Nigerian. There are so many great contributions that Nigerians have made to the world and I think that this is a fantastic opportunity to do exactly that and share it with everybody. Mm. It's, a, it's not a one woman show, it's actually the success of this relies on collaboration in terms of even the team that I'm working with. I mean, in terms of production, this is a, um, a collaboration with Team 33. Mm -hmm. Also Business Day, we're looking forward to you guys also being a part of this. I mean, for me, there's so many people that are aligning on, on the premise of what this is set on, which is about sharing how great we are as a people and as a nation to the world. Mm -hmm. And I'm open to whoever has an interest in being a part of it and coming on board. Speaking of alignment, yes. let's talk about all of the people that will be inspired right. by what you're doing. What will be your advice to anyone who is, you know, looking to undertake in challenging feats like this? Because I call it challenging. It's right. a very dynamic one, definitely. but it's just the impact of what you're trying to do for me that's really inspirational to me. So what will you tell people who also want to do something of this nature, break a record, mm -hmm. you know, undertake the challenge, right. so to speak? What be your advice to them? My advice, I've been saying this almost, it's like I'm repeating myself like a broken record throughout mm -hmm. this week, but everything that you see around you mm -hmm. first existed as an idea in mm -hmm. somebody's head somewhere. Mm -hmm. Whatever you want in life, you have to first see it for yourself before you can achieve it. So it's understanding what you want to do. And for me, the only limits that you have on yourself are those that you place on yourself. If you don't believe, you know, whether you believe you can do something or you can't do something, you're right. It's your belief that underlines it. Mm. So it's first of all, just having that self-belief. Mm. So believe in yourself, irrespective of what people tell you. If you believe you can do something, you can. Interesting. So after this record, because I know you're going to break it, what will be your plan for the future? You know, for me, I'm a journalist, so it's work continues. It's just, it's an opportunity to now share even more stories. I'd love to travel around Nigeria. I'd love to sit with Nigerians in the, in the diaspora who are doing amazing things and actually create something that is value driven and infotainment driven around it. So for me, it's, uh, you know, it's just, this is just the beginning. Just the beginning. This is just the beginning. Thank you so much, Toyin. Thank this you so much. This has been so amazing and I wish you a very, very good one. Next well Tuesday, yes. we'll be there. 29th we'll be of there. October at the Wings Complex.
Thank you. And thank, thank you for inspiring us. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Elizabeth Musa. Keep watching Business Day.